Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Florida, a master's degree in education from Armstrong Atlantic State University, and a doctorate in education from Georgia Southern University. I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist, a member of both the American Board of Hypnotherapy and the National Guild of Hypnotists, and I'm president of the American Alliance of Hypnotists. I'm the director of the Steve G. Jones School of Clinical Hypnotherapy. I also serve on the board of directors of the American Lung Association in Los Angeles. I have over two decades of experience in hypnotherapy, and I still maintain a busy practice and teaching schedule because I see clients and teach classes worldwide. My client base consists mainly of people who want to lose weight, stop smoking, or gain confidence. Other clients include sales teams interested in boosting motivation and increasing income, also singles looking for love, insomniacs desiring proper sleep, and actors desiring more confidence for their next audition. When I travel to see clients and teach hypnotherapy certification classes around the world, I visit such places as Tokyo, Japan, Barcelona, Spain, Paris, France, London, England, Montreal, Canada, Los Angeles, California, and New York, just to name a few. By the way, since you have an interest in hypnosis, perhaps you'd be interested in becoming a certified clinical hypnotherapist. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com, and click on Hypnosis Classes at the top. You can either train in person or online. After your training, you'll be added to our worldwide directory of certified clinical hypnotherapists, and you'll receive a certificate. I was fortunate for many years to have my office in Beverly Hills, California, where I worked with such wonderful people as Tom Mankiewicz, the writer of Superman, Geraldine Saunders, the writer of The Love Boat, and many other celebrities. I have been interviewed on CNN, Fox News, and appeared on True TV, in addition to having my own hypnosis TV show. With my over 20 years of experience, I'm happy to share with you techniques that I've both developed and learned which can help you improve your life. I encourage you to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. There you will find my life's work, 22 books on hypnotherapy, over 3,000 hypnosis recordings available as downloadable MP3s or CDs, and these recordings will program your mind to achieve goals in such areas as weight loss, motivation, and stopping smoking. I also have audiobooks, such as this one, where I'm talking with you and sharing with you in a very dynamic way techniques that you can use to improve your life and the way you do things. The reason I'm telling you all of this is not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I, your teacher, am very capable and I know what I'm talking about. I'm also very happy for the opportunity to share this information with you. So rest assured that you're in good hands and let's have some fun as we now expand your knowledge. I wish you well in all of your endeavors and please be sure to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. Welcome to the program that teaches you about connecting with angelic realms. Now realize that you can connect with angelic realms and you can also use this information for channeling. Channeling would be when you share the information with someone else. So you can connect with angelic realms and that would be for yourself to get information. But channeling would be, for example, if you had somebody who wanted to know something about a relative perhaps who had passed away. You could connect to the angelic realms, get information about the relative, and pass it on to the person that you're dealing with. So those are just two situations in which connecting with the angelic realms can be helpful, getting yourself information and acting as a conduit or a channel for someone else to get information. My interest in connecting with angelic realms started when I was six years old and my mother passed away. And I was a, obviously, a young child, and I was very upset. But beyond that, I didn't really know how to process any of that. I didn't really know what had happened exactly. I just knew she wasn't going to be around anymore. But I didn't really, at that time, have the capacity to understand exactly what had happened and how permanent it was. I just understood that she was not coming back from the hospital. She had had leukemia, and she was in the hospital for some time, and 
one day my father told me that she had passed away and I was upset but more than that I was confused because a child doesn't really understand what death means a child doesn't understand that this person's body has died and that their soul has left and that their soul is not coming back to that body and so forth but it was that time that that was explained to me. It was explained to me that her body had died and that her soul had left her body. And so I remember having this vision of a soul. I kind of had a schematic diagram in my mind, if you will, of a soul. And for me at that time, a soul was a piece of wood with a groove cut through the middle of it. And the wood was uh, rectangular in shape. And it was about maybe two inches thick. And it was probably four feet high by two feet wide. And it had just a groove cut right down the middle of it through the length of it. And it was sort of a concave groove. And that, in my imagination, was a soul. That's what a soul was. I believed, actually, beyond my imagination, I believed that that's what a soul looked like. And so any time that I imagine a soul from, from that point forward, I still think of that board for whatever reason, and that is a soul in my mind. Well, it's interesting how children can be very perceptive. Now, to the best of my knowledge, a soul doesn't actually look like that. But children have the advantage of just taking in information. When they hear about something, they accept it in most cases, and they accept it as reality. Think about Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and so forth. Well, some of the information that a child is given is actually accurate. There's a lot of fantasy that a child is told about just to make their lives interesting, I suppose, like the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and so forth. But there's some information that's real and true. And although a child may not understand it exactly, although a child may not have a completely accurate perception of it, a child will take in that information and accept it as real. So I took in that information and accepted it as real. My mother's body had passed away and her soul would go to heaven, I was told. And so I had the advantage of having the understanding uh, that a child has. But there's also extreme sadness to that story, obviously. As I look back now, it's getting close to 40 years ago that that happened. But I still look back at it with some sadness. But I also now have the perspective of an adult. I can realize as an adult how that child felt. I can almost separate myself from that young child who I was, that six-year-old child and realize what the child was going through. So I can almost take an intellectual uh, approach to it now, since it was so long ago, and I have matured quite a bit since then. But that's what started me on the path of wanting to connect with angelic realms. I thought, wait a minute, my mom is gone. You've got to be kidding me. You know, as a kid, you're thinking, wait a minute, she's gone? She's not coming back? She turned into a soul or the soul part of her took off and is not coming back? There's got to be a way. So I went through different phases where I would try to uh, do things that I thought would bring her back. I remember drawing up a diagram of a robot. If I created some kind of mother robot, maybe she would come back in, in the form of that. So as a kid, having trouble comprehending all of this, it becomes challenging, and the kid's kind of scrambling to think how they can recreate that. Well, it was quite a few years later that I was exposed to metaphysical studies. Uh, when I was probably 16 or 15, I was in high school, and I started reading about metaphysics, and that's around the time that I became interested in hypnotherapy also, by the way. And I realized through metaphysical studies that these people are not actually gone. These people who leave our lives, who cross over, cross over into spirit, they're not actually gone. They're just in a different place and they're in a different form, but they haven't actually left us. And they still do desire to communicate with us. And it's simply a matter of opening ourselves up to the idea of communicating with them that allows us to be able to communicate with them. So having an open mind, having the open mind that a six-year-old child would have is the only prerequisite for this program. If you can put yourself in the frame of mind of a person who's willing to believe in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus, and other things, then your mind will be open enough to believe in channeling. Because unlike the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus, channeling is real. It has to do with metaphysical energies that are present in our universe. It has to do with the eternal nature of our souls 
Every one of us, we all have that eternal nature to our soul. So when we take the physics concept of matter can neither be created nor destroyed and extrapolate that into a metaphysical realm, we realize that people live forever. And if you are in a similar situation to me, which most people are, most people have a relative who has passed away, then it's comforting to know, and I want you to know, that you can connect with that person. So a lot of what this program is about is connecting with people who have passed on, people who are loved ones, people who you shared uh, wonderful moments with, uh, people who you miss dearly, or people who you just wish you could pick up a phone and call. Well, connecting with angelic realms allows you to do that. It makes it that simple. It makes it just like picking up a phone and calling someone. You know, the other day I was talking to my stepmom who came on the scene when I was about 10, and thank goodness she stepped in and married my father and uh, put up with him and put up with me, and she was just a wonderful person, and she still is. She's still alive in the flesh and uh, just a wonderful person. And she was talking to me the other day about my relative who is my mom's brother and said, you know, your uncle is still alive? and shows you what a close family we are. And I said, no, I actually didn't realize that. She said, oh, yeah, your, your mom's brother is still alive, and he's married and living up in the Northeast. And I said, well, do you have any information about him? And uh, she gave me the information, and I contacted him. And we talked for probably about 15 minutes, I guess. And I talked to his wife. And I thought during that conversation how similar that is to channeling. Here is a relative who I thought I couldn't just call on a cell phone and say, hey, how are you doing? I didn't realize he was still alive. And I called him. We talked for 15 minutes. And we caught up on a number of things. And he filled me in about the family. And he filled me in about uh, what he had been doing and asked about what I had been doing. And he, he said he heard all these wonderful things that have been happening for me. And I said, yes. And we talked in some detail about some of the things I am doing. But the whole time I was talking to him, I thought, wow, that's really similar to channeling. That's really similar to connecting with angelic realms. Because as far as I knew, this person had passed away. He hadn't yet. He hadn't crossed over into spirit. But as far as I knew, he had. So it was a wonderful treat for me, just like channeling. And so that's what I want to give to you, that ability to essentially call someone anytime you want, even if they have crossed over into spirit. Your uncle so-and-so, your aunt so-and-so, your mom, your dad whoever, calling them, reaching out and calling them anytime you want. What an amazing ability that is that we have. And so often we overlook it or we're not even aware of it. Well, this program is about that. This program is about reminding you that you can do it, making you aware of how to do it, and putting you in touch with those people who you want to be in touch with. I want to tell you what channeling can do for you. It can actually change your life. What you're going to find is that when you do channel, when you do become a medium or a psychic, to use the common catchphrases of the day, you open yourself to a wonderful world, which is much larger than the one you've been living in. And you're going to find that you can access wisdom, you can access knowledge, you can access ideas, concepts, all sorts of information and information generating ideas which you will not access in your regular everyday life. It's sort of like when I first discovered diving and I had been living on the surface of the planet and didn't really think much about what might be underneath the water until I started diving. That opened up a whole world to me. There's cave diving, there's wreck diving where you can go down and see ships that have sunk. There's shark diving if you want to be adventurous. There's drift diving where you just drift along in the current of an ocean. And it's something that really opens up a beautiful, wonderful, amazing world which actually has a lot more to offer than you might think. Some people think, well, underwater there are fish, and some people think the same way about channeling. Well, in the spirit world, if there is one, they'll say, then there are just a bunch of spirits, and it's not very interesting. But actually, the concepts and the ideas and the wisdom that you can gain from that world far exceed anything that you would ordinarily encounter in your everyday life. And to start things out, I want to tell you that getting into a hypnotic trance is the easiest way to channel. I was fortunate to be on a TV show about a year ago, and the show was called Door to the Dead. 
and they called me in as the hypnotherapist to help the people in the haunted house. It was a haunted house in Virginia. They called me in to help the people access the entity which was haunting their house. So whereas they could have random access to the entity whenever the entity wanted to communicate with them, they were having difficulties communicating with the entity when they wanted to. And they wanted to have a conversation with the entity and they wanted to tell it to leave the house. That became a bit of a challenge because the pathway of communication wasn't available. They had a psychic there who was also a medium and he was able to contact the spirit. But as far as putting the people who lived in the house in direct communication with the spirit so that they could tell it what they needed to tell it, that was presenting itself as a challenge. So I was called in on the TV show to hypnotize the people who lived there And in trance, they were able to easily communicate with the spirit. Now, it wasn't a pleasant communication because this was an evil entity. However, it was a communication that needed to happen. And the result was they were able to progress further along the lines of getting the entity out. Now, when I say evil entity, what I mean is an entity which is doing things that the people don't want it to do. In this case, it was scaring them and basically terrorizing them. It was on occasion possessing their bodies and it was giving them nightmares and making threats and all sorts of things which are really not desirable. So although the concepts of good and evil may be largely opinion, the general consensus or opinion in this case was that this entity was up to no good and needed to go. I say all that because I hesitate to call anyone or anything evil, but the classic definition of evil definitely fit this entity. So I want to do for you what I did for the people of that household. And by the way, you can go to probably YouTube if it's still around by the time you're listening to this recording. Hopefully it'll be around for years. But uh, just type in Steve G. Jones, Door to the Dead, and you should be able to see the video about that. Somebody was kind enough to put just my scene on there. So that's what you'll get when you type in those search words. So let's talk about what it is to get into trance. On the TV show, the people who were undergoing hypnosis had the benefit of having me there, so I put them into a hypnotic trance. However, you'll want to do that on your own. I want to tell you that it's a lot easier than you may think, and if you have any of my hypnosis recordings, you know that going into trance is a natural occurrence and actually feels comfortable and relaxing. It's also very natural for you to go into hypnosis all by yourself. Anytime you're spacing out, if you will, like when you're vacuuming or taking a shower or sometimes driving. Anytime you're doing something that you know how to do, when your brain can kind of check out and you don't need to be fully alert, that's a time when your brain can slip into hypnosis. And you can be in hypnosis without even realizing it. For example, some people go into a trance when they drive and they get to where they're going and they don't remember the trip at all. And they're wondering, what happened to me? What happened between point A and point B? I know I arrived at point B and I left from point A, but I don't remember anything in between. Well, what generally happens is that your brain powers down into an alpha state, which is a hypnotic state, and doesn't need to be fully alert anymore. You could at any time react if something happened to be in the road, but if everything proceeds as normal, then you don't need to react out of the ordinary. You just need to do the basic functions, which we call driving, and those lead you to point B. It's such a repetitive task for some people that they just kind of space out, if you will. They go into trance during that time. It's not dangerous, but it's something that happens every day to a lot of people. Some people do it at work. Maybe you don't forget what happens during those periods, but your brain will power down to a lower state, an alpha state, in which your brain is actually electrically cycling at a lower frequency. So whereas in beta, full awakening consciousness, your brain might be cycling at 850 cycles per minute, in alpha, you're around 600 cycles per minute. So there's a measurable difference. And this happens naturally. So rather than getting concerned about your ability to hypnotize yourself and put yourself into trance, realize that you do it every day. You're a natural at this. You've been doing it all your life. All you have to do is do it on command now and use that trance state to achieve what you want to achieve, which in this case is acting as a psychic medium. So let's talk about how to get into hypnosis. All you really need to do is relax yourself, and you do this by thinking of a peaceful place, and you make all the sights and sounds very real for you, very real, and dwell on that for about five minutes. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, everything you can think about the place, the relaxing place, you make very real for you. 
It's not necessary to say anything to yourself. You can just relax and let it happen. Just think about that relaxing place. Just by thinking of relaxing and thinking of that relaxing place, you will relax and you will go into hypnosis. You can deepen the state by imagining the sunset, for example, and count backwards in your mind from 10 to 1 as the sun slowly sets, or perhaps if you're imagining yourself in the woods and walking down a hill, you can count from 10 to 1 in your mind as you walk lower and lower down the hill, or perhaps for whatever reason, if you find yourself in a shopping center, if that's your relaxing place, then you can count backwards from 10 to 1 as you go down an elevator or an escalator, if you find those relaxing. Some people don't like elevators or escalators, so make it all work for you. Pick a scenario that's relaxing for you, make it real, concentrate on that for five minutes, not now, but in the future when you hypnotize yourself, and then deepen it by counting backwards from 10 to 1 as you go down something or as you watch something go down, for example, as you go down a hill or an escalator or an elevator, or as you watch the sunset. So those two are very simple, right? Very simple procedures. And then you're in hypnosis. So the whole thing will take about seven minutes, five minutes of relaxing in your relaxing place in your mind, and about two minutes of intensifying that with a deepening, counting from 10 to 1. And the deepening can be shorter if you want it to. I don't want you to time this. I don't want you to say, okay, five minutes for the induction, the first part, and then two minutes for the deepening. I just want you to relax yourself and then count backwards from 10 to 1 and either go down something or watch something go down in your mind. Sometimes it may take you a little longer if you're particularly stressed. Sometimes it may take you less time if you're very relaxed. And after you do it a few times, you're going to get very good at it. And then once you're in that state, channeling becomes easy. And by the way, when you're all done channeling, all you have to do is count yourself out of hypnosis. Count out loud from one to three when you want to come out of hypnosis. One, two, three. That way, you're going to send a signal to your subconscious mind that it's time to come out of hypnosis. See, if you just think one, two, three will take you out of hypnosis, then what are you going to do? You're going to be thinking one, two, three the whole time, aren't you? Well, I better not think about one, two, three. I'll come out of hypnosis. So the signal between you and I that you're coming out of hypnosis is one, two, three, counted slowly and said out loud. So until you say it out loud, you'll still remain in that hypnotic state. So you don't have to worry about inadvertently bringing yourself out just by thinking of one, two, three. Does that make sense? Okay. So the next part that we're going to work on is teaching you what to do when you're in that hypnotic state. You're going to be open. Your mind's going to be open. And by the way, if you want to hypnotize yourself to stop smoking or lose weight or to gain motivation or confidence, you can use this for that also. In that state, you can program yourself for anything. But in this course, we're going to use that state to program you to channel, to open your mind, to allow you to believe in your ability to channel. So your conscious mind has all these doubts, says, wait a minute, channeling? I don't know about that. Me channeling? Hmm, we'll see. But your subconscious mind doesn't know any better. Your subconscious mind just accepts things like a computer. Thank goodness, because the truth is you can channel. So once we get past that conscious part of you that says, wait a minute, and to that computer part of you that says, okay, I'll do it if you tell me to, then we're all set and you're able to channel. So next I want to talk to you about how to channel. All right, let's take a little break, and I want to make sure that you're with me, that you're paying attention and that you're learning something. So what I want you to do right now is if you're driving and you can pull over, go ahead and do that. If you're not driving, then you can definitely do this. You can take out a piece of paper, and you can write down five things that you've learned so far from what I've said, five things that resonated with you. Now, I want you to keep in mind, they don't even have to be five things that I said. Maybe you got some good ideas from what I said. Maybe I said something and your brain took it and blew it up a million times and came up with all kinds of wonderful, amazing possibilities based on what I said. If that's the case, then feel free to write that down. I just want you to write down five things, whether they came from me or they're just thoughts that came in your head. Five things that have come to you so far, either from me saying them or from you thinking them, as a result of listening to this program so far. So as I'm silent, I'm going to give you ample time now. I want you to write down five things, five thoughts that you have as a result of listening to this program so far. Do this now.
Okay, do you have your five things? If not, go ahead and finish them up. Five things, write them down. So I'm going to move forward now. Let's take those five things that you have written down, and I want you to elaborate on them. For example, if you have an insight, insight number one, that I should change blank about myself, whatever it may be, I want you to elaborate on that. Whatever you've written down for point number one, something that's come to you during listening to this program, I want you to elaborate on that now as I'm silent. Good. And now I want you to take point number two and elaborate on that. What was the second point that you wrote down and how can you enhance this idea? I want you to make it real for yourself because I want you to have, after you finish this program, something you can use. So on point number two, elaborate on it. Consider what you wrote down as point number two, the foundation. Now build a house on it. Go ahead and write down something now as I'm silent. Good. Now you're getting some momentum. Now for point three. Point number three that you wrote down, something that came to you as you listened to this program, I want you to elaborate on point number three as I'm silent. Good. Now take point number four, the fourth point that you wrote down, something that came to you while you're listening to this program. I want you to elaborate on point number four as I'm silent. Great. Last but not least, point number five. Take point number five and elaborate on it as I'm silent. Good. So now you have something that you can take with you after this program. You have those five points that you elaborated on, and you can use them after this program's over. So let's continue on with the information now.